Uh, well, I think you know, over the next five years up until 2025, we're probably going to be expecting somewhere in the region of mid, uh, mid teen percent. So anywhere between 14 to 16 percent penetration globally uh, for EVs across the, the global market. Uh, and in terms of India, I understand India has some uh, very uh, ambitious uh, targets. I believe that number is 7 million vehicles by, uh, by approximately 2030. By way of a little bit of background, Galaxy Resources is uh, an Australian headquartered company uh, listed in Australia and we are probably, as of last year, the fifth largest lithium producer in the world. Um, and so we have a lot of exposure to the EV sector. Uh, our projects are essentially in Australia, Argentina and Canada. Uh, but essentially our products get predominantly sold into the North Asian market, uh, essentially China, uh, Korea and Japan. And so one of the perspectives that we have is obviously there is a lot of uh, market share of raw materials that is currently being uh, consumed uh, by China, Japan and Korea. Uh, and at the moment, obviously, if you look at the Indian market, uh, the supply chain is still very underdeveloped. So obviously, we have a very large population here. We have a very large uh, automotive uh, population as well. Um, EVs is still just beginning. Uh, but in terms of the value chain, the supply chain, the way that we think about it is essentially there are four steps uh, to get into a battery. So you obviously have to start with your raw materials in the ground, whether it's your lithium, your cobalt, your nickel. You then have to produce a chemical from it. So in the case of lithium, it'll be lithium carbonate and lithium hydroxide. Beyond that, you then have to produce uh, materials, which are essentially cathode materials, adult materials, separators and electrolyte. And these are the four main components that go into constructing a battery cell. And then you then have cell production. And then last but not least, you have pack assembly before it goes into an EV. And so when I look at the Indian market at the moment, notwithstanding the very strong potential that we have, the major challenge that I see is that the supply chain is very, very limited. So we have some pack assembly, and I believe that there are companies looking at domestic cell production, uh, but the rest of the supply chain is basically does not exist as of today. Well, just to give you an example, uh, China last year sold 1.26 million vehicles. Uh, electric vehicles and the vast majority of them 70 80 percent are pure battery electric vehicles um, its target is to reach a stock of about 5 million vehicles by next year so rough estimates for vehicle sales this year are somewhere in the region of about 1.6 to 1.8 million vehicles so that will probably get them to about 5 million vehicles in the whole country as of today China already has 1 million charge points uh, across the whole country so your ratio of vehicles to charge points is about five to one. Uh, and you know, China has had to invest a lot in the grid infrastructure to upgrade their city grid so that it can handle the, uh, the new charging facilities that get built. Uh, the challenge I think for India, but it's also an opportunity because I believe that if the right investment is made, uh, there will be some significant growth opportunities there, is that you can't just grow your EV population because you need your charging infrastructure. And so I think the number of charge points in India today are probably very limited. And so you need to get to a reasonable ratio uh, and also a reasonable distribution of your EV population, even if it is just in the major cities, in your tier one cities in India, to having the right number of charge facilities. Because even if the OEMs make all the investment in building the EVs and building the battery supply chain, and having the actual EV vehicles, electric vehicles, come onto the market, if there's not enough charging facilities, then the consumer is not going to be buying those vehicles because it's, they're always going to be, have to queuing for charging. So at the same time as looking at the whole EV and battery supply chain, uh, I believe it's also very important for the Indian government and also Indian corporations to be looking at the infrastructure and the related services around them. Correct. So, so if you look at if you look at the the, the the China situation and the rest of the world situation and then try and extrapolate a strategy for India. I think China, China had an, a battery industry already. Uh, and the main reason why China had a big battery industry is because you had a lot of consumer electronics that were made in China. So as a result, it already had a lithium ion battery industry set up, except they didn't produce EV batteries, they produced other batteries. So for China to move into uh, EV batteries, was a technology shift, but they already had a battery industry. Okay, They already had cell manufacturing. So they had a greater ability to move into, uh, to move into what I call a large majority battery electric vehicle, BEV kind of strategy. And hybrids was always going to be plus or minus 20%.
for other countries like the US and Europe, uh, the mix of EV sales uh, in, in earlier years was actually the other way around. So there were more hybrid, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. So one of the panelists earlier uh, today talked about two key words that need to be added to hybrid, and it's plug-in. Okay, uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles uh, will allow a couple of things. Firstly, uh, the size of the batteries that you need for a plug-in electric vehicle are much smaller than the battery electric vehicle. So the demands on kind of having to build a battery industry, a pack industry, and a cell production industry uh, to supply a million plug-in hybrid electric vehicles versus a million uh, battery electric vehicles the challenge can be reduced. So you're de-risking kind of the, the, the amount of time investment that you need to put in to deliver all those batteries, okay? You can take more time over it. The second thing is obviously we're plugging hybrid electric vehicles because the batteries are much smaller. They can actually do two things. They can either be charged at home or in the, uh, in the office, but the engine itself can actually charge the vehicle as it runs as well. So that is potentially an option for India to look at a transition period where there is greater promotion of plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and then ultimately take you know take the right amount of time uh, with the right amount of uh, investment and the right amount of policy to support kind of battery electric vehicles over time because it will take time to uh, to evolve so I'll give you one example so a lot of people look at the statistics in China today and said oh my goodness they've done very well but China is already on the 13th five-year plan so the government in China works on five-year plans, and today it is working on its 13th five-year plan. But the concept of electric vehicles and renewable energy was not invented in the 13th five-year plan. It was actually previously conceived in, in its more substantially in the 11th five-year plan. And so since the 11th five-year plan, there's been over 10 years have elapsed. So the, 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 the progress that you see in China in the whole lithium-ion battery industry as well as the EV industry has taken even China who used to have a lot of domestic industry already the better part of somewhere between you know 10 to 15 years to get to where it is today okay and so while there is a lot of excitement around EVs and we want to have EVs tomorrow we want to have the charging infrastructure tomorrow um, it also needs to be recognized that you know this is what I call in terms of electrification of transportation to continue to improve the quality of life, reducing air pollution. Um, this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, and things need to you know, happen at the right pace along the, right, the way, the right level of policy, the right level of regulation, the right level of investment. Okay, Because it takes time to attract investment. And when you invest in new businesses and new technologies, they also take time to build up their capabilities as well.